welcome back to Student Hub Live Broadening Careers um, event. We're now going to talk about digital careers in technology and in the world of work. We've been having a, a fabulous day. Oh, Megan. Megan's got my worry monster, Michelle. <laughs> Prize of terms. She always gets the worry monster and then she likes chewing it. I see you've got yours there, Michelle. How's everyone feeling? Was everyone worried about the assessment centres? Well, there were quite a few comments about uh, not enjoying group interviews or psychometric tests or uh, a bit worried about assessment centers. But I think everybody's enjoying today. There's a lot of love for, for Megan. That's your dog there. Oh. And uh, I was just saying that uh, Gary normally sits next to me, but he's um, decided he doesn't like me today and isn't sitting next to me. Oh. So don't know what to say. But we'd love to see pictures of people's pets or information about uh, their pets at home. Who are their study buddies? Who are who's helping them get their CVs together? Who's helping them prepare for interviews? Ah, oh, poor Gary. I think if you bought a tin of tuna out, he'd come running as cats oh, often yes. do. That's the thing about dogs are so loyal. My cat's over there sitting on a on a chair that's uh, got various things on it, but it's still sitting there very uncomfortably. <laughs> Just to fit in with this session here, we have had some good discussion around technology and innovations with technology. So there's certainly a lot of interest in what this session is about to be about. Brilliant. Oh, well, that's super because I've got um, Kate Marchant and John Woodthorpe here. Kate is from the Careers and Employability Service um, here at the Open University and works with students um, across the curriculum. Um, and John is the Director of Teaching for the School of Computing and Communications. And he's part of the team managing the school's curriculum and student support as it develops in areas like cyber security. Um, and John has also been an Associate Lecturer, Module Chair and Academic Lead for the Computing and IT Student and support team. So plenty of experience uh, here. We're going to talk about digital skills first um, and uh, what digital skills um, that an OU degree will get students in the workplace. So uh, let's talk about that first, Kate. Yeah, well, um, thanks, Karen. Um, it's hard to know where to start, really, isn't it? Because just the very nature of OU study is going to equip someone with so many different digital skills. Um, I mean, from a fundamental level, we're talking about um, students accessing the module materials online and um, going to tutorials online and, um, you know, contacting other students in a digital way on forums, contacting the tutor digitally and um, by email. So it's just really thinking about those kind of things that you might do um, all the time without thinking about it, really. Um, and those are giving you digital skills. Um, and then, you know, from a course perspective, depending on what you're studying, you could be um, learning a whole range of more specific digital skills as well. So, um, I mean, I'm thinking of things like um, maybe you access technology online through things like STEM labs um, on the module you're studying, or maybe you're learning about cybersecurity or programming, or, you know, maybe you're accessing um historical journals online or law journals you know it's thinking yeah, about those so, kind of things as well so, certainly for us kate uh, in in computing and communications then what we study and the way we study it are so closely linked, you know, that we're looking at the technology, uh, we're, we're teaching people about the technology as they're using it. So, yes, you mentioned cybersecurity, trying to keep people safe, uh, programming skills, those sorts of things um, that, that are, are specific to us. But to, to some extent, you pick them up as you go along in, in, in a lot of other OU uh, uh, study as well. Yeah. Because yeah. it's really yeah. relevant right now in particular. I mean, I've seen um, the work that the Open University have been doing with uh, some of the toolkits, the government toolkits, um, because, of course, you know, now that we've been locked in our houses for so long, um, you know, having digital skills has become a necessity and something that many OU students um, are, are very familiar with, but is so important for the world of work now. Yes, yeah, yes. And, right. and... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a fight oh, later. You carry on, Kate. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, um, as Andrew was just saying in the video um, that um, came on before we were on screen, um, I think he was talking how the way that they work has changed so much and the world of work has changed. Um, you know, computers were introduced and now we're all using the Internet as well. Everything is much more interconnected. Um, so those kind of skills are really, really valuable. And I think a government department did... Um, 
uh, some research last year and they found that about 82% of um, online vacancies were asking for digital skills at some kind of level if they weren't the fundamental ones we were talking about before the more specific ones as well um, so it's so really Karen, important. Karen you mentioned the toolkit um, uh, yeah. and that, uh, th that, that picks up on some of the things that the OU has produced some of the things that are in um, uh, open learn and so forth in terms of, of uh, working safely online in terms of uh, communicating effectively online and, and, and those sorts of things um, and uh, it, it's well worth having a look at what there is there. Um, even, even the non-OU content can be quite good um, and, and, and see how you can make use of the things there um, and, and build them into effectively your own sort of uh, portfolio of, of digital skills. Brilliant. Michelle, I hear there's a lot of love for John's T-shirts. John, you always wear very interesting clothes. What are people saying about uh, never never too li uh, limited an opportunity to comment on what we're all wearing and doing? <laughs> That's right, Karen. Graham and Mandy straight away, first thing, love the T-shirt, which sparked discussion about being introverted, but still enjoying being online. Uh, Mandy talked about learning how to vlog in her last module. And uh, Robert's been talking about a digital courtroom. So we've been thinking about things uh, online, adjusting our work practices to being online, loving not seeing people. But I did point out we all love Student Hub Live. And actually, uh, <laughs> Maria said she saw the fruit behind me, wanted to go get a piece of fruit, but doesn't want to leave her computer computer because the speakers are so interesting. <laughs> oh, don't worry. We'll have a little break a bit later. But yeah, I'm the same. I'm surrounded, luckily, by all sorts of uh, various biscuits and fruit and things going on here. But no time to eat them because I'm chatting too much. <laughs> so, John, so yes, these toolkits, these toolkits, they are super, actually. I um, mean, it's great that the OU have been, um, you know, uh, included in some of these government plans to upskill people. So how now that we're working at home often, how might some of these skills then um, help uh, our students in this current situation? John? I, we, well, we're all using uh, a lot more in the way of audio and vis visual technology uh, working from home. Um, I, I don't know about everybody else, but uh, I, I spend most of my working day sat in this chair staring at this screen, um, sometimes seeing people, sometimes just talking to them if the uh, signal's poor. Uh, but uh, you need to be able to, to manage an environment like this. Uh, and Kate and I started talking over each other and, and, and sort of backed off and, uh, and worked out who was going to talk. Uh, it, it, it's, it's different to being in a room or being sat on the sofa next to each other as we might have been ordinarily, but you still need to find out how to manage uh, and, and, and how to cope with uh, a, a, a really very, very strange situation that we're, we're forced into, whether that's uh, children or pets or whatever in the, in, in the background. But as, as part of all of that, it, it's also learning how to do it uh, effectively and, and safely um, uh, and uh, relying on a computer that uh, has perhaps been more for entertainment uh, and, and now relying on it much, much more for work and starting to think more about what's, uh, what's a sensible, safe way of behaving with it. Mm, no, absolutely. Um, and, you know, we're getting to know people in such different ways, like, um, you know, wearing different clothes. You know, I've been hanging around in vests and shorts and various things because it's been lovely weather. Um, and so the whole way of dressing and seeing things is different. And that's one thing I love about Student Hub Live is now seeing into people's houses and getting an idea about the things that they choose to wear if they don't have to go to an office and meeting their pets, etc. It's all it's all great. But it's also changed for, for employers, hasn't it, Kate, in terms of, I guess, the new social norms norms about what is and isn't acceptable and John mentioned that whole thing about effectiveness. Yeah that's right I mean we've we've just seen um, Justin and Chan talking about um, assessment centres you know employers are telling us um, about how they've really drastically had to change very quickly the way that they work and the way that they recruit um, so a lot of those centres are going online um, you know you might be interviewed online you you the onboarding process where you sort of get, start a new job and meet an employer for the first time, a lot of that is happening online as well. So employers are having to change very quickly the way that they work and the way that they recruit. So, um, you know, if students are, are knowing that and understanding that and have an idea of what kind of skills they've already got that they can use 
towards that you know that will certainly help them and who knows you know when because of everything that's happened so quickly will employers be rethinking about how people actually work for them in the future that's something that quite a lot of people are talking about as well in sort of the recruitment world and whether the way that we all work will change anyway mm. you know, that could benefit no, a lot of our students too it's interesting because I think when um, so much uh, happened in terms of digital careers and innovation, I mean, I was in London at that time and it was all very swanky, all very office based, very um, showy, etc. But it's changed now so much, you know, so much innovation is happening in somebody's, you know, upstairs spare bedroom etc and, and this opens loads of opportunities for people um, and we were talking about innovation earlier as well but I guess that the whole idea about working from home can be really appealing to, to many of our students um, so what do you have to say about the whole idea about home working then and, and how that might relate to, to, to some of these careers? Um, well, yeah. uh, do you want me to uh, start yeah, off, Kate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Cameron's, fault for not, <laughs> Cameron's fault for not, not saying which fault. one was it's talk. It's not my fault. John, you can go. All right. <laughs> um, I, I, I think uh, 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 as students uh, on, on an OU module, you pick up a lot of skills that you don't realise that you've got. Um, and you, you learn how to work with other students. Uh, in the, the, the T-shirt has a message as well. In, in that I am an introvert, uh, but um, uh, you force yourself at times to, to work with others. Um, we, know, uh, we know what students feel about group work. We know that a lot of you don't really enjoy it, but we also know that it's something that employers value and that if you can demonstrate that you can uh, talk to other people, communicate with them effectively online, then that's a really, really important transferable um, skill. Uh, I'm, I'm reminded of a, uh, an employer that uh, we talked to when we were producing one of our modules. Uh, there are games uh, developer in, um, uh, uh, in, in Iceland. Uh, all their programmers have to spend uh, time working on their support forums, talking to their customers. So even though you're recruited perhaps as a programmer, you need the skills to relate to other people, to talk to customers, to talk to suppliers, to talk to managers, so that you can explain to people what's going on. Ah, oh, that's brilliant. Absolutely. Sorry, I just must cut to Michelle because uh, Gary has joined us just about to ruin her cup of tea on the keyboard. Hello, Gary. <laughs> so here's Gary. He's just jumped up. He does walk all over the keyboard. Uh, so, yes, we're getting some more love for, for the dog as well. Uh, for Megan, sorry, my apologies. <laughs> and uh, we were just talking about how someone would have invented the Internet, even if we didn't have the Internet at this time. And I must give a shout out to Deborah, whose 12 year old daughter loves the T-shirt and wants to be an OU student. Doesn't get much better Aww. than that. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely wonderful. So any bad typing from Michelle, you know what's happening there. OK, um, so Kate, I wonder if you could sort of fill us in then on the home working and things and, and how um, uh, careers, I guess, from a careers perspective, that, that might be useful. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, ju just following on from what John has said as well, I think um, one of the great strengths of OU students really is that they um, so very often have a, a lot more to bring to a role than just the qualification alone, you know, from study experience. They've got a study of life um, and all of those transferable skills that, that John was talking about. Um, you know, we have loads of students here in the OU that really um, value the opportunity to maybe do something in um, a bit more sort of friendly way so you know they, they might want more work-life balance they might want to work from home maybe because they've got caring responsibilities or maybe they've got a disability where working from home or having more flexible working would definitely um, be a good option for them I mean something we've introduced more recently and um, to reflect that is virtual internships where we offer students the opportunity to get some kind of practical experience at a distance um, on a more flexible basis um, and a lot of those um, can help students get digital skills as well you know they're in things like um, intranet development business growth manager so you know it's definitely worth our students having a look out for those on, on things like opportunity hub 
Brilliant. And we've put the link in the chat uh, for that as well. So if you'd like to click on that and open it in a different tab, then that would be super. So one of the things that we have been talking about, I'm fairly broadly throughout today, but I wonder if we might close with this whole sort of area, is about some of the skills that OU students develop. Um, because one of the things that we do know is that these are very valued by employers. I mean, so many people have said, you know, will, will an employer think my OU degree is as good as a, a degree from a brick university, etc. And we have so much evidence that they not only think it's as good, but better because of all of the skills that people pick up from studying either part-time or at a distance, et cetera, with the Open University. So my question then, um, and we'll go to you, John, first, is how students can make the most of some of these skills that they've developed? It, it's being aware of what's happening to you. I mean, I've talked to so many students when I've been a tutor and, and, and they've said that they've, they've suddenly realised partway through a, a, a module that, that they thought they were studying something technical and, and yes they were but they've suddenly realised that they can do so many other things as well and it, it, it's keep your eyes open for, for that. Have you learnt how to uh, understand technical papers more clearly? Have you learnt how to explain what you've read to somebody in a, in a way that, that makes sense to them? Um, have you learnt how to uh, explain to your, your, your line manager or, uh, or your partner who, or someone who you live with, what you've been studying, that's a valuable communication skill just to be able to pass that sort of thing on. So think about what you're doing, think about how it's affecting you, and don't be afraid to put that down on your CV and, and, and say that you can do that. I mean, if you're an OU student, you've learned how to study different modules at the same time, you've learned how to potentially uh, look after uh, your family or or work, uh, um, uh, have a, a full-time job, part-time job, uh, care for people. You've learned how to do so many different things all at once, and you've got really, really valuable transferable skills. No, absolutely. And it is important to mention those. And perhaps we were talking earlier about making notes of some of those skills. I'm in a notebook or, or somewhere so that you're very mindful of those when, when you need them to talk about. Kate, um, what do employers tell you? Yeah, um, well, you know, I think John summed it up quite well there. I think for you to, as a student, just to become conversant with your own employability skills, let's call them, or your transferable skills, and be able to talk about them in a way that helps the employer feel confident um, about how, how you've got them and how you can use them. Um, and if you're not sure how to do it, that's okay. We're here in careers to help you do that. Or if you're not sure where to start, I would just say to anyone who's watching, um, you know, if they want help with that, if they want help to sort of talk through how they can talk about that in applications or interviews, please do get in touch with us. Um, there's a really excellent, actually, activity in our Your Career Planning Guide that can really help you eke out those employability skills and help you think about things that you've done before and things that you're doing now in your studies and the kind of skills that you're gaining from that. So we're here to help. If you're not sure where to start, just get in touch. You can talk to us, look at our website as well. There's loads of activities on there to help and support you. Brilliant. That's wonderful. Now we have a question for you from Jasmine, but I'm going to ask Michelle if she can ask it because I know everyone's just in love with Gary now, Michelle. So do you know the question <laughs> Jasmine's got? Or if you're too busy patting him, then uh, I can ask it. <laughs> no, I have the question here. It's and, yeah, and Gary's just been sitting here patiently next to me. He's so adorable. Anyway, <laughs> how far into a degree do you need to be to do a virtual internship? I'm only on my first module of my degree, but would love to work in the IT industry while learning on the job as well as doing the degree but would like to do a virtual internship to gain relevant experience oops gary got bored he's going back oh, to bed gary's off. <laughs> <laughs> My dog's gone as well. i've got i've got a stand in michelle just for if this were to happen so i can just put um put like an ah, that's up brilliant. There, he's gone out to the garden anyway a serious well he's, he's turned his back on me he's... <laughs> <laughs> kate how what should jasmine do when can she do a virtual internship Okay, well, I think it's second, well, level two, stage two or stage three. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping that um, someone from our employer engagement team might just be able to confirm that in the chat box. 
Brilliant. And if we can't answer yeah. any questions directly, then do email us. It's studenthub at open.ac.uk. Um, so if there's any questions that you've got, um, I mean, we'll just forward them to the careers and employability team, but there'll be somebody there who'll be able to give you the right answer. So if there are any specifics, I know there have been a few that have come up along the way. Do let us know. And Jasmine, if your question isn't answered um, by one of our colleagues in the chat, then uh, please feel free to drop me a line on the email and uh, we'll get it sorted for you. Well, that's been a fascinating session. So uh, John and Kate, thank Thank you very, very much. What are you going to be both doing for the rest of the day? John? Meetings. Meetings, oh. meetings, <laughs> meetings. <laughs> and are you going to change your T-shirts? Is it no. a special student have five T-shirt? No, okay. <laughs> Kate, what are you doing for the rest of the day? Well, I'm definitely going for a cup of tea next thing. Aww. And then talking to students later on this afternoon. So that's all good. Oh, sounds fantastic. All right. Well, enjoy the students. Enjoy your meetings. Thank you both so much for coming along. We're going to have a short break Thank now um, and then we'll be back. Um, I can't wait for you to see my next guest. She looks absolutely superb. So stay tuned and uh, you'll see why in just a moment. See you in a sec. <laughs> 